just settle in for our meditation practice together. Wherever you have found your spot for these few minutes, I would invite you just to get comfortable. The first key to your meditation practice is comfort in your physical body. We know that the mind is gonna be restless enough. We don't need the body to be restless as well. So just get comfortable, either seated nice and tall where you are grounding down or lying down and kind of stretching out in a way that you can feel the breath going up and down the middle of your body. And so let's just start with a few breaths together. As you gently begin to close your eyes, let's take a long, slow, deep breath in. And just let that go. A long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale it out. Inhale again. Exhale, release. And then I would invite you just to continue in a rhythm that feels good. If that pace feels right for you, just maintain it. If you need to slow it down a bit or speed it up a bit, you do what feels right for you. And then just take in the spot where you are in your home, wherever you found your spot today. Just feel the sensation of the air around you. Notice how the physical parts of you feel. And then notice what's going on in your mind. Our goal is to be present. This is not something that we perfect, but it's also not something that we can fail at. Our goal is to be present. We will show up, give the very best that we have in this moment. And if the mind distracts us, then we'll show up again in the next moment, one breath at a time. And so typically in our times together, what I'll do is I give you something for us to all think about and visualize and reflect on together, and then we'll grow quiet. And we'll just let those words just hold space. And we'll see what is revealed for each of us individually. But through it all, we'll maintain the slow breath in and the full breath out. And so there's a story that I want to share. I love this story because I think it reflects the full essence of each of us. It's a story about this sculptor in India. And he was known as this amazing artist who could make these sculptures of elephants feel like they had come to life. He could take this slab of stone or, or whatever material he was using and you'd look at this elephant and it's like you could feel it breathing. Like you could see it moving living. He just had this amazing gift. And so one day someone asked him the question and said, how do you do it? How do you do something that no one else has been able to do when it comes to sculpting these incredible creatures? And so before I tell you his answer, I would invite you just as you hear it, think about you and the journey that you're on. We're going to see how his answer can inform our path today. He said, there's really no secret to what I do. I go and I get a big block of stone. I set it up in my studio and I study it really carefully. I get to know it. And then I pick up my hammer and my chisels and very slowly and with intention, over many, many years, I chip away all the parts of that stone that are not elephant. So just listen to that again. He finds a stone, and he brings it home to his studio, and he studies it carefully. He gets to know it the edges and the corners and the size and the blemishes. And then he picks up his hammer and his chisel and over many, many years, he chips away all the parts that are not elephant. And every time I hear that story, it does the same thing to me. 
because y'all, we are that stone, but we are also that sculptor. What we tend to do to ourselves is we pick up the hammer and the chisel and we tap away at all the parts that we don't like and we try to do it quickly. Sometimes we do it without a lot of care or a lot of compassion. And that result, to use the metaphor, it's not an elephant. That result is not us. The lesson this sculptor is trying to teach us is that this is who we are. And there's an essence of us. Just like he feels like in that stone, there's the essence of an elephant. But what we have to do in our life is we gently and over time, we get rid of the things that are not us. We chip away at the things that are not healthy choices for our life. We let go of the relationships that don't allow the true essence of who we are to exist. In other words, we chip away all the parts that are not elephant. And then what we're left with is this incredible, unique, living, breathing version of us. There's not another one like it. And so I would ask you, wherever you are on this path, on this journey, and I don't mean this path of meditation, I mean this path of living. How have you seen yourself? Have you used the figurative hammer and chisel in a way that's kind and compassionate to yourself? Or have you been a little rough? Or for some of us, are you in a stage of life where you've put the hammer and the chisel down and you're just kind of letting life happen? Which usually means there's things coming into your space, into your spirit, into your heart that don't belong there. And so maybe today we could reset. We could see ourselves as this piece of stone that with the right amount of care, the right kind of good practices, the right relationships, those things could represent the hammer and the chisel and so that someday after care over the years, we will begin to see this essence of who we really are. This incredible, good, beautiful being. And so I would ask you tonight, are you willing to take the time like that sculptor takes with each sculpture to invest in you? Showing up here in this moment is a beautiful way to start. Your meditation practice can become one of those tools like that chisel. Because one of the gifts of this practice is that the real us gets to show up. Not the us that we package for the world, the real us. And oftentimes people will shy away from meditation after a few times because they don't always like the, the them that shows up. But I would propose that you invest in yourself and you realize it's a journey and a process, but that you are worth the investment of time. I am in a place in my life where I have realized that I am worth the investment in time. And I hope that you can get to that place too. And so for these next couple of minutes of quiet, just get your own visual in your head of this sculpture and this sculptor and these tools. 
and see what it looks like for you. And if the elephant idea doesn't quite work, see it in a way that works for you. But no matter what the visual is that you see, see that it takes time. It takes time and it takes care. And it takes studying yourself and knowing yourself and beginning to make tough decisions that after a while aren't tough anymore about the things that are healthy and not healthy for you. So in the quiet, we'll each just stay in our space and see what the mind and the heart and the spirit reveal. Let's take a long, slow breath in together. And just open up your mouth and sigh it out. One more, nice, slow breath in. And sigh it out. As we end our time together with these few minutes that we've had, I would encourage you Start to see what the investment in you looks like. If the metaphor of the sculptor and the sculpture of the elephant works, then keep that in your mind's eye. If there's another way that you can see it that will give you meaning, then see it that way. But remember what he said. I bring it back to my studio. I study it carefully. I pick up my tools. And over many, many years, I start to chip away at all the things that are not elephant. Today, we start the process, one little chip at a time. Namaste.